Hello and welcome once again to Liberty's Great American Cookbook. No national cuisine has been so underrated or poorly treated than American food. But cooked properly the way it's meant to be, it can be some of the best food in the world. This is the show that claims back American classics from the fast food joints and shows you how to cook it perfectly at home. In today's show, if you've heard of tacos, tamales, and tortillas, then you've heard of Tex-Mex, the perfect fusion of traditional Texan and Mexican food. It's generous with cheese, meat, beans, and spices, and it's as filling and delicious as you could possibly want it today. With me in the studio to help out with the tasting, I have three very special guests. Professor Phillips O'Brien lectures in history at Glasgow University, and as an American, he knows a thing or two about food and culture in the States. The Glasgow food geek, otherwise known as blogger Pam Gilmore, is also here, as well as linebacker Gordon Wallace from the East Kilbride Pirates, Scotland's number one football team. Hope you all brought your appetites. Now, I mentioned beans and spices, staple ingredients in all Tex-Mex food, and you'd be amazed at the range and the flavors. I've been on a mission to find out just what's out there. On a hunt for the most authentic Tex-Mex and Mexican cuisine, I'm at Lupe Pintos, a hidden gem in Glasgow's West End and Edinburgh's South Side. This has been my go-to spot for all Mexican spices and hot sauces. We're about to meet Doogie, chef turned Mexican wrestler, for a shot at some red hot tamales. So what are we cooking? So this is my favorite Mexican street food, uh, tamales. Uh, I've chosen this because a lot of restaurants stay clear for, for it because it is a bit fiddly, but I, I think it's good fun uh, to assemble. Uh, and that, that's the tamale right there. So the light wee Christmas crackers. They look like little it. Christmas crackers yeah, that you can just pull apart. The beauty of it is unwrapping your little surprise tamale and you can fill them with anything you want. Flag. Is there anything that's really spicy that's going to like knock my socks well, off? Well, what we are going to do here with these tamales is every second or third tamale gets a, some, a belt of this sauce in it. We call it tamale roulette. So, so someone has a bad a yeah, bad so you're, so you're munching away and then every, the, every sort of third tamale is like, ooh. <laughs> So to make a tamale, you get your little wrapper and you, you, you mix the masa into a sort of paste like this. So I'm going to put some black beans on this as well. Mm. Now you can fill this with anything. You can even fill it with sweet fillings. Oh, that sounds uh, good. You could put like uh, bananas, strawberries, anything if you want to make a dessert tamale. So this one here... This going, one's going to be yeah, the, one this, of the this kickers. This is going to be the nasty one. So this, <laughs> is a, this is a habanero sauce. And habanero is... Can uh, I taste it? Yeah, it's a, it's, it won't kill you, but it is spicy. It will, it will kick in quite soon. It's very really spicy. Is that hot? It's really hot. So, once you've, blo <laughs> once you've blobbed that in... That was a bad idea. <laughs> so you then uh, just roughly roll it over on itself. Beautiful, and then you steam it for and how And then long? you pile up a big bunch of them, and then you steam them for about three quarters of an hour to an hour. Well, let's have a try. Here's hoping I don't get the, the roulette. Okay, the, yeah, well, it's every third one, end. so it's uh, so you, so <laughs> My you should statistical be okay. chances. Okay, so here is a wee tamale. Mm, so a little sauce goes on there? So, yeah, so you would just uh, have a, uh, some sauce there, oh, and then yeah. and you would just oh, break it up with a spoon. It's nice I and soft. I can't even wait. Mmm, well, mmm. Delicious, eh? Mmm. That is divine. And I didn't get one of the hot ones. I'm gonna go drink about a gallon of milk to calm the habanero that is setting my mouth on fire. And then we're gonna be back in the kitchen rustling up some real authentic Mexican cuisine with Doogie's special spices. But now I'm just gonna have a little bit more. Good idea. Mm. Mm. Let me tell you, in case you did not guess, that sauce was hot. It was uh, not my best decision, but probably not my worst. But let's get down to business. We're gonna be preparing beer battered fish tacos with a little secret seasoning that I stole or acquired would probably be a better term from Dookie. And to top it off, some cinnamon ice cream with homemade churros. That'll keep you warm. So let's get to it. We're gonna start with our churros. So I have just 60 grams of butter that's been sort of melted completely here. Um, not any browning or anything fancy, just melt the butter. I have 220 milliliters of water, just plain old water that you dump in. Three tablespoons of dark brown sugar. It has to be the dark brown stuff. It does not taste uh, very good if you don't use the dark brown. 
which I've probably packed in there a little bit too tightly. And then just a tiny pinch of salt, and we're gonna bring that to a really nice boil. Uh, not boil for too long, but definitely a nice boil. You wanna get it moving there. These are a spectacular dessert to do because you can put them with anything. We're putting them with cinnamon ice cream, which is a very Mexican type dish. But you can put them with anything. They're so easy. They're gonna take us a total of four minutes to cook them completely. So there's our nice sauce and it's getting real hot right there. We're gonna add in our flour off the heat. Um, you're gonna go back and forth between the heat and not. Now this is gonna first look like a real big sort of gooey mess, but eventually it's gonna form a really nice ball, which is what we're looking for. So we want this gooiness to get into a really nice ball, and that's how you know that you're ready to take uh, your churros to the next step and add your eggs. I have to tell you, I was, um, I was looking online and I saw this video of churro cups, because I always make churros just long churros. But I saw these fabulous churro cups, and of course when you watch it online it looks so easy. And I, I, you invert a cupcake tin, and then you pipe the churro dough around it, and then you freeze it, so you get these sort of cups that you then put your ice cream in. So of course I didn't let the dough cool while I was uh, doing that, so the dough was falling everywhere, all the dogs were jumping trying to grab it all. And I finally, I got it all cleaned up and I put it back on the, on the tin. And I put it in the freezer, brought it back out, thought okay, well here are my great cups. Of course, okay, of course this has to happen. I break my favorite knife trying to pry the cup off my cup tea tin. It was, I threw it all in the sink, finally threw it in the sink, and then of course I clogged my sink up uh, because the churro dough was all in the sink. Worst time ever. Terrible kitchen disaster. What about you guys, Phillips? Have you ever had a, a kitchen disaster? Well, when I, I grew up in, a, in an Irish Boston household, and believe me, the only spice we used to ever have was salt. And I thought I would try to learn cooking myself from a cookbook. And I, I made what I thought was going to be a very sophisticated, I think it was a French cream soup, probably from like the Betty Crocker cookbook. <laughs> and. I had no idea about the difference between a bulb of garlic and a clove of garlic. Oy vey. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and, and the soup called for two cloves of garlic. Well, after what I thought was in fact a clove and a half, but was a bulb and a half, I got rather tired. <laughs> so I stopped at that point and continued with the rest of the soup. Uh, and it ended up basically being gar cream garlic mush. Um, and it had this weird green cup. You have so much garlic, in fact, it turns things a little green. Oh, no, man, no one else I know. Done. I've <laughs> seen that so, before, just I mean, like that. Yeah, I think and now it, it would be a health food. <laughs> <laughs> I feel like that's what happens with health food. All of a sudden, you're, you, know, you can eat a bar of chocolate a day, or you can eat a, drink a whole glass of wine, and you're being really healthy. But right now, we're just going to go with our churros. So I've added all four of our eggs in here, which is really, really nice. And we're just gonna mix that up until it's all combined. Getting my, my muscles in here. I'm gonna be like, Gordon, what can I try out for the for the East Kilbride Pirates football team? I get these muscles going. So this is looking a little bit gloopy, but I promise it's gonna all come together into this very nice dough. And we're gonna put it in a piping bag. If you don't wanna do a piping bag or be fancy, just take a freezer bag, stick the dough in, and then clip the little end of it, and you can put it right into the fryer. I have about two or three centimeters of oil heating up right there, and we're just gonna fry these really easily. No big deal. We'll put in a little bit of vanilla. As I say, Whoa! Just like that, just, just just dump the whole bottle in there. But uh, the key with vanilla is to make sure you use expensive stuff. Whenever you're using extracts or anything like that, you really wanna get the expensive stuff. So we have our handy dandy piping machine here, and we're just gonna dump some of it in, right in there. There we go, nice churro dough. As I make a total mess, my kitchen's always a total mess, it's just the way it is. So we're gonna squeeze that right to the end and we're just gonna straight pipe it in. You don't have to do anything fancy. And you hear that sizzle. You can make shapes. You could put shapes onto a wax paper and make a freezer out of it. Uh, and you can get like, you could do it for a birthday. You could write someone's name in the freezer, use wax paper, not like me, and break your knife. And then as soon as that's done frying, which is gonna take about a minute or two, we have just plain caster sugar right here and a good old dose of, of cinnamon. You really don't wanna be sort of stingy with it. 
And as soon as that comes out of the fryer, we're gonna roll that in and your churros are completely finished. So there's a quick break coming right up, but stay with me for part two as we dive into those fish tacos and cinnamon ice cream. See you in just a few minutes. Welcome back. It's Tex-Mex on the menu today, and before the break, I rustled up some churros, one of the most traditional of Tex-Mex dishes. Coming up, there's much, much more with my very own beer-battered fish tacos, and it's all rounded off with some big servings of cinnamon ice cream. There's so much to share with my special guests today, Professor Phillips O'Brien, Glasgow food geek Pam Gilmore, and East Kilbride Pirates linebacker Gordon Wallace. And don't worry, guys, there's always plenty to go around in my kitchen. So, fish tacos, let's get started. I have some really plain cod right here. Uh, you can use any white fish, mahi-mahi is a great one, even though that's kind of hard to get here. But uh, cod, haddock, whatever white fish you want to use uh, is going to be delicious. And these are just some really nice white pieces of cod here, really fresh. You want to make sure you cut against the grain so that it all stays together right there. So here's our piece of fish. And we're going to just mix up with our, uh, with our batter dippage here. So this is 70 grams of flour and 70 grams of corn flour. We're going to add some beer. You can use non-alcoholic if you want. Uh, it gives it a really nice flavor to the fish. You can actually taste it uh, when you make it. So we're going to add that in, and that's going to be our wet ingredient here that we're going to dip in. I always like to make sure that when I'm dipping, I go from wet to dry. You can add in a dry at the beginning, but it's always, you always have to finish on a dry. So there's our batter. We're going to add a little bit more beer. This I stole from Doogie as well. I've stole a lot of stuff from Doogie. Uh, it's fabulous stuff. And uh, it's a very, very dark beer. It's a Mexican beer that's really dark, which is what you're looking for. So there's that. And the, the alcohol does burn off, so you don't have to worry about any, any issues with that. So we're just going to dip our fish into this batter, just like that, real easy. Let it sort of dribble off a little bit. Perfect. And then this is just 70 grams of flour. Nothing fancy, just a little flour. And I don't season beforehand, I season after. And we're going to season with this fancy chili. It's not the really hot one, don't worry, I wouldn't want to kill myself. But it's a, it's a really nice hot chili. And into the fryer, it goes. You got a nice little sizzle right there, nothing big. We'll do one more. We have this nice beer batter. Make sure you get that dribbles off. It's a total disaster if you don't. Everything just gets mushed up all over the place. So there's that beautiful flour, and again into the fryer. If you want to be adventurous, use your fingers. It's probably safer to use some tongs, but I'm, I'm, I'm riding on the dark side today. So we have our corn tortillas. Uh, you can use any type of tortilla you want. These are really nice, fresh tortillas. I have a little bit of butter heating up in this pan. Uh, don't use Pam or anything like that. Don't use any spray, baking spray or anything like that. Make sure you use real butter for this because it really tastes very different. And you're just going to put your, your tortilla right there and let it toast up just a little bit. Not a lot, just a little bit to give it a little bit of warmth. So our fish is frying. We're going to flip it. It really should only take about... I don't know, two minutes each side. You're just looking for that nice golden brown that you can see we're really starting to get there, just so that the fish is fully cooked through. While we're waiting for that, we can serve up our churros right here. So I have this nice glass, and I have some, oh, there it is. I have some cinnamon ice cream that I whipped up. You can buy it, or you can take vanilla ice cream, put a little caramel and cinnamon, mix it through, and it's real nice. So we're just going to spoon that in there. Oh my gosh, look at that caramel, it's just divine. This is gonna go so perfectly with our cinnamon and sugar churros. So in that you go, be generous with your guests. It's always better to overfeed. Have them come hungry, because then food tastes delicious, and have them leave full. So there's our cinnamon ice cream. I have our churros that have been keeping warm in the oven. Oh, look at those beauties. So you can do them all different shapes, all different sizes. I like to give them an extra little roll in the cinnamon and sugar before I put them in. And you're just gonna stick them right in there, just like that. Another extra little roll, little extra cinnamon and sugar, never hurt anybody. You're gonna stick them out just like that. And then just a little chocolate sauce to finish that out. Oh my goodness. 
can never have too much chocolate sauce either. It's dessert, might as well go for it. So that's our beautiful churros with cinnamon ice cream. And now we can start getting our tacos ready as our fish is all frying up there beautifully. We'll keep that going for a minute. We have our fabulous corn tortilla. Now the great thing about this recipe is that you can really fry up anything you want. I one time had rattlesnake in Mexico and it was fried just like this. So you can pretty much have anything you want in here. You could do chicken, you can do any other type of fish, you could do beef. Chicken fried steak is a real, real deli delicacy, I guess I would say at home. So now we're gonna just take our fish off. I have it on a little cooling rack just to let it, all the oil dribble off. So I'm gonna bring my fish over here. I'm gonna stick it in this lovely taco. Look like that, Oh, that just feels good. Uh, I stole some guacamole and some salsa and a little bit of sour cream from Doogie. So you're just gonna put big lovely glopples of that on there. Don't be shy, that's what makes it taste spectacular. A little bit of salsa, perfect. And then for the final touch, we're gonna just put a little bit of this chili right on top, just for that extra bite as we go along. And there you have it, your fabulous fish taco and your churro bowl. Absolutely fantastic. It's an American feast of traditional Tex-Mex food. Gorgeous fresh main courses and a really spectacular dessert. Let's head to the table and get cracking on this food. My daddy always says you gotta eat it while it's hot. So let's get going, dive in. Wow. Fish tacos, you don't have to use knife and fork. You can be, you can be, you can grab it and go, you can go for it. The lime really helps bring out a lot of the flavor. So I would definitely suggest making sure you put lime on this when you're at home. So Gordon, how popular is American football? Um, in the last few years, I've really started to notice an increase um, in the popularity of it. I think partially because of getting a few games a year coming over to Wembley and Twickenham this year as well, and getting a few games in London. Prospect of a franchise coming over here to actually play in the NFL and be based in Britain. It's a pretty cool idea, but we've noticed it at our uh, practices and stuff like that. Uh, every January we do an open tryout for anybody who wants to come along, and every year we get more and more numbers and more people interested in the sport, they just want to play it. Well, that's fantastic, that's fantastic. So now, before we go, what do we think? Verdict, I need, I need, I need compliments here. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It's beautiful, yeah. I cheated, I'm using my fork and knife. Okay. I'm, I'm gonna be the lady. I, I, like, I like being a lady too. I, I usually get it all over my face, so sometimes it's nice to be polite. So Phillips, what do you think? It's just well, I mean, the fish is just so nice in the batter, and it goes well with the avocado and the salsa. It's actually the most Tex-Mex thing I've ever eaten in Britain. Mm -hmm. so, well, um, good, that's the goal here. Yeah. That's the goal here. So, do you support football? I'm sorry, American, American football. football. Soccer. American, American football. I, bizarrely, I do. You do? My husband, when he was young, went into a Kansas City game. Oh, oh. yeah. Now we're big Chiefs fans. Now you're bizarrely, big Chiefs fans. Bizarrely big Chiefs fans. Do you watch it around, are there sports bars where you can watch football, around, American football around here? Um, the problem I've always found is on Sunday nights when we're trying to watch it, in bars and stuff like that, there's always Spanish soccer mm. <laughs> on. Oh, so so it's trying to fight with the people that are getting the, the football. You need to find a pub that's got more like than one skybox. Big, big footballer <laughs> player, American <laughs> football player. You could just take them out. Um, what do we think about this? Mm, about our church? Well, I know, right, you guys need Ooh. to get moving here. You got a lot to eat. Phil Phillips, are you an American football fan? Oh, yeah, fan? I mean, I, I grew up playing high school football and, and, and things. I mean, not, not probably as good as you are, but um, I played a little high school ball, and uh, I love watching it still, and I'm a big Patriots fan, and so it's been a great period for us that, uh, that we've won four Super Bowls in the last 12, 13 years. So. Bragging. Yeah, I was about to say. I think there's been a defla <laughs> deflate the are just so going sad. on there. I mean, they, yeah, try so, they try so hard. They, try. they beat my Panthers in one Super Bowl as well to get that one. How did you become a Panthers fan in, in, um, the, in, the, in Scotland? It's a few years ago when I started getting into sport. Yeah. I started learning about it through just playing the PlayStation game. Okay. And oh. I just went the I always just went to Panthers. So that's the team that I kind of learned mm -hmm. the, to love. the just of the game through. Mm -hmm. um, and then after I realised how it, like what the game was, stuff I realised I liked it. Realised the team I picked to support were terrible. Oh. <laughs> yes. It was already too late. But you're already you're, you're the under, you know gotta go yeah, for the yeah. underdog or something. Yeah. Is it um do you, where where's your stadium? 
um, for the Pirates. Yeah, in East Kilbride? It's not in East Kilbride, actually, it's oh. in Hamilton. Oh, um, we share with uh, Rugby Club. Okay, fantastic. So it's Hamilton Rugby Club through there. Fantastic. It's yeah. always amazing to me about how big the stadiums are in the States and stuff yeah. for American football. And college football as well. Yeah, exactly. So big, so exactly. big. So they're, huge. They're the biggest. Yeah, yeah it's like hundreds yeah. of thousands of people. Ohio State. Yeah. A school football game. I know, it's amazing. <laughs> well, I am so glad that you guys enjoyed all the food. Is it all uh, our beer battered fish tacos? Amazing. Nice little chili in there. Some okay, churros. So How are the churros? The churros make it. The churros, the churros yeah. make it. The churros there we make go. It. Nice little cinnamon ice little, cream in there. Adds that, that crunchiness. I had no idea what the churros were going to taste like oh. as they were getting made, but they're absolutely brilliant. <laughs> they're amazing. Oh, I'm so <laughs> happy. I'm so happy. <laughs> we're out of time on another Liberty's Great American Cookbook. Many thanks to my guests today, Phillips, Pam, and Gordon. And of course, to you at home for watching. All of today's recipes are of course available on the STV website and I will be back soon with another chapter of Liberty's Great American Cookbook. Bye for now. <laughs>